Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about Helsing. Uh, but before that, we were talking about our past experiences being weebs, trying to figure out whether or not Rick has lost his mind and forgetting episodes actually exist, <laughs> as well as some nice, wonderful horror stories of him installing cable for his previous job. Yeah. Yeah. Tis wanna, the season, right? Right. You want to catch the. Uh, that water part of the conversation, patreon.com slash featured anime podcast will a dollar a month will get you that bonus content. Now on to the meat and potatoes, juicy, bloody world of Helsing. Uh, Helsing came out in for this one came out in October, 2001 and ran all the way through January, 2002. It's 13 episodes long. The producers for it are Fuji TV, Pioneer, LDC, and studio for it was Gonzo. Uh, its source is a manga. The genres are vampire, action, horror, and supernatural. Uh, Sending as well. And yeah, it was a nice trip down memory lane for me. Well, see, you say that. However, I never saw it before. And it was actually, in my opinion, not bad. Not bad. See, I say not bad as high pitched as I do because I was, I was led to have a lot of hype for it. So I was expecting much better. That said, I didn't realize it was 19, sorry, not even 1900s anymore. I didn't realize it was, uh, 20 years old. Thousands. Yeah. I figured it, it looks 20 years old. Yeah. It looks 20 years old. And I was expecting it given the snippets I've seen. I must have seen the Helsing Ultimate or snippets of that because the the artwork was not as defined. The artwork was not as strong, if you will, as what I was expecting. Yeah, no, the the artwork is definitely vastly different. I, I feel like it's more crisp and and more defined in Ultimate than it is in in just Helsing. <laughs> I have the perfect, perfect uh example of what it is think dragon ball kai dragon ball z kai the opener versus what they showed you Mm -hmm. in the show right right right. the opener crisp lines vivid picture the show is what it was originally minus the filler they didn't remaster anything that that's what i feel like to me like it it could be remastered they they also did some uh audio changes to it as well Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Um, so there's less filler. They did do a lot of editing for it, and there were some changes to it, to Kai, oh. from what I remember. Uh, but there was also some audio changes as well to it. So there there were... Okay, I just assumed that it was the same. They just took out the filler. Because we got to, like, Frieza in, like, 15 episodes rather than the 45 that normally would take. Yeah. Well, here's the interesting thing for you. In case... Uh, so did you watch it subbed or dubbed dubbed because I tried subbed and it hurt. It hurt my ears. Okay. So the interesting thing is, and I don't know why they chose to write it like this, but instead of it being out card, they wrote it out card with an R. Oh, uh-huh. uh-huh. uh, and the reason why they did that, why they wrote it out like that is because that's how they were saying it is. I don't know. Now the reason why they were saying this. Okay is because there is no L sound really in Japanese. So the L and R sounds are actually interchangeable, which is why it tends to, they have difficulty with words that have an L or R sound. Okay. So why they chose in the subtitles to write Arukard (laughs) is beyond me. But I guess they were trying to keep it to exactly what they were saying, which was Alucard. It could be. Uh, in the dub, they did say Alucard. Which, which is the correct way is to say it. But like I was saying, the reason why they put the R in interchangeable in Japanese. That makes sense. Um, now, I got a question. Yes. What exactly is Alucard? Is he a god? Is he? He's a vampire. See, you say that, but it felt like he revealed himself to be the first. Uh, he revealed Dracula. himself. He re- revealed himself to be 
a true vampire. So you say that, but he also, at the very end, he, the way he killed, not the very end, but like, it, it sounded like, it felt like, and it looked like a death through, you know, through being impaled, which is very famously done by Dracula. Which is actually done very famously by Vlad the Impaler, who Dracula AKA. was modeled <laughs> Right. A.K.A. Dracula. Right. Which is also the Count, uh, Dracula, No Life King, uh, Vlad Tepes, uh, Bird of Hermes, Ultimate Vampire, Immortal, uh, Invulnerable, The Impaling Prince, True Immortal, Nightwalker. These are all names for, these are all names for Alucard or these are all names for? For him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, I was like, or the all names for Vlad, because that's that's a nice, impressive list. Those are all the same. They're one and the same. So he is modeled after that. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, so is it possible that that's who he actually is, as far as the stories goes? Or is it just something that he was modeled after? No, he is that. It's, it is his, he, it, he is Dracula. He says he's called Alucard because of the agreement in between him and uh, uh, Helsing's, Integra's Helsing's father, the agreement that he had, the contract he chose to make. And it never went into why that contract was made, did it? No. It also never went into why he was starved for 20 years. Like, dear God, I've, so I've done intermittent fasting myself. Um, for, for some reason, years, I, my goodness, no, no, man. Well, oh, wow. That's yeah. why I can't put on weight anymore. It's just falling off me, literally decrepit. Ooh. No, but I've done intermittent fasting because I was like, I can't feel hungry anymore. You know, first world problems. And I was like, I just won't eat until I'm hungry again. And it took like six days before I was actually like, I'm hungry. And I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine how long 20 years would be. After, I'd say five years, it probably all blended together to just pure insanity. And the, the guy basically was able to be like, all right, cool. I'm just going to sit here forever and not be pissed and still keep the contract that some dude who made it died. And then he tasted sweet blood and was like, I guess I'll keep it. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Is it a bloodline thing? Because if it was a bloodline thing, then the brother should have been available for that as well. Well, he tested the blood of the brother, and I feel like it doesn't have to do with the bloodline, but more so how the person is oh. as a whole. You know what I just thought of? Hmm. The brother is not part of the bloodline because he's not going through the father. He's of the same blood, but he's not part of the bloodline. Well, yeah. So perhaps that's why. Because he said your blood tastes like crap and there's power in the Helsing blood. Free vampire said so. It's super sweet. Sweetest I've ever had. And the <laughs> little policewoman, as the, as the dub caller forever in a day, had the same kind of taste. But like, which is why I say it probably has more to do with them the as an individual. Personality. No, not okay. personality, them as an individual, not personality, but an individual on an individual level. Okay. Well, I mean, the choices they make, which would be no, because yeah, you're right. Personality, their, their personalities are far too different, but the innocence, possibly For, that's it. Maybe. Because we don't know if we know that the police woman is said to be a virgin. Um, well, I should rephrase. She was not outright said it, said to be a virgin, but when the, she met the little girl vampire who was older than dirt, um, she was like, you don't know the, the carnal impulses of man yet, which I took to imply that she was still a virgin. And it's possible that Helsing also is a virgin because she doesn't seem to be the type of person that would give in to lust. I would be surprised if she gave in to lust. Yeah, she doesn't give in to hardly shit. She's like, I've got impure blood in me. Slit the throat. Get that out. <laughs> I'm like, right? God damn. And did you notice that the sutures they used weren't thread, but her own hair? We can only assume that. 
not traditional thread, but then at the same time, they didn't show him cutting hair. They just showed him holding something out of a saline solution. And it looked and it, like hair. Well, it, how, how else would you uh, draw string, sir? Or thread? Thicker, thicker, more, more. Uh, okay. Let, let's phrase it like this. We're in okay. a make-believe world where vampires are real. And she literally slit her own throat with a knife yeah. and is in the middle of this giant room being operated on after having been attacked by vampires. She, she could have accidentally cut her hair on the, when she was trying to slice her throat. Yeah, she didn't. Could have. She didn't. Because it wasn't a slicing <laughs> motion, right? It was a stabbing motion. <laughs> it was a stabby stab. It wasn't a slicey slice. It was a stabby stab. Exactly. <laughs> so. But that, that makes me think that the, the, the vampire process isn't uh, instant because what they'll do is she was able to like stab herself and bleed the blood out, which means it's not self-replicating. It's not a virus of some kind that will self-replicate. Well, you didn't hear like they told you how they make a vampire just prior to that happening with the chips, right? No, I was talking okay. about. So when she was there having her blood sucked on, mm -hmm. all right, before she started drinking her blood, she said, I am going to give you enough blood to turn you into a ghoul, but not enough to turn you into a vampire. Oh, yes. Okay. See to me that. Yeah. Okay. So, she has to drain her blood, give her blood, but give her enough blood to turn her into either a ghoul or vampire. See, that doesn't make much, much sense to me because Alucard was able to turn the little policewoman into a vampire. Later, he was like, if you drink my blood, you'll be free. Typically, th that's actually been a mainstay in a lot of vampiric lore, to my understanding, is you have to go through this whole process of giving them blood, which then gets into their system so that way they can become a vampire. But to break mm -hmm. that carnal bond after they're a vampire, they have to willingly drink the blood of their master so they can become their own. Gotcha. In theory, wouldn't it be kind of cool <laughs> if the amount of blood given dictates how strong a vampire you're going to be? Why? Because I feel like that's kind of a, a cheap shot. I feel like it's well, a cop no, like out. Like you could only get as strong as your the vampire giving you the blood. So if you already have a badass vampire, their little bit of blood to turn you into a vampire is just as strong as like someone's, you know, half a body worth of blood kind of thing. So, so what lineage you're is, is important too. So what you're saying is it should be instead of being how long you've been able to live going through those trials and everything like that, instead of it being based on the length of life, it's based on the amount of blood that you've been given. And that's your starting point And then go up from there mm. because that's what it sounds like it, you're saying. Yes and no. Yes and no. But it, so what I mean by lineage is so it matters the person turning you. So Alucard is really, really old. So his blood would be more potent in my theory than someone who was recently turned. So the trials and tribulations he went to strengthened himself, which in turn would allow the people he turned to, match to have a him. starting. No, no, not match him, but have a head start for their starting point. Have a start with a higher physique, if you will. I still feel like that's a cop out. Then how can you, if that were the case, how can you justify how strong she is? Does any old vampire become that strong? And it's just however long you live, that's where you gain your strength from. Who, revolving by yourself. Who are you talking about? Uh, the policewoman. Well, he, it's commented several times that she's not as strong as what she could be. And yes, because she's not consuming the, the, the blood. She's weakening herself. Right. And then when she is, she gains her full strength. But it's I would only assume that she's strong, as strong as a vampire can be at her age as young as she is. Okay, so you think it's an age thing. So yes. the older you are, the stronger you are. Yeah, because that's, again, to my knowledge, from all the lore that I've seen, that's traditionally how it ends up being. The longer, the longer you're alive, the stronger you become. And this is, mm. it's not just my say. No, no, I agree with you. I, it's, I it's, agree with you. It's, it's typical. 
I just find that to be kind of a Black dud. Lust. Lackluster. Yeah. Why do they have to be alive so long to be able to get strong? Why do they have to go through all these trials? They should just no, shortcut it. That's, no, because the way you're saying. saying it, all all you got to do is turn someone, you know, at 2000 BC and just shove them in the ground until they've matured enough to be a threat to everybody. Because if that's the case, then the vampire hunters who are hunting these old people who are hunting these old things, they're just naturally strong to begin with. And when they get turned into a vampire, they reduce their strength to start at everyone's starting point. What? So well, the way you're saying it, you have vampire hunters, right? right? If they were to get turned, would they be just as strong as her? Yeah. So that's a downgrade in their strength because as a Ow. vampire hunter, they're already stronger than her. No, they're not. That the regenerator dude was easily stronger than her. That regenerator dude literally was the culmination of technology and science being put into him. They even stated yep. that he's not naturally like that. So if he were to get turned, he'd be as strong as the vampire chick. If he were to get turned, I would have. Yeah. If he were to get turned, I yeah, would I'm assume, just hypothetically. I would assume he would be at wherever he's at and it grows. Okay, so his starting point would be higher than hers based on her based on the physical altercations prior to being turned, right? Right. I mean, if they so, ever decide if so, all right. It's all hypothetical and I don't think it really matters too much, but for my own personal, like these are the things going through my head when I'm watching it. <laughs> so the the manga to my understanding touches on it a little bit. Uh he becomes what's considered a monster of God. Because he takes parts of uh, of a uh, God Helena that that small child vampire, he somehow yeah. comes by some parts from her and adds it to himself, and that's when he becomes the monster of God. Oh, so he goes through a metamorphosis, so to speak, of sorts. Yeah, yeah. It's not not the one we're looking yeah. for. Yeah. Okay, I guess to each their own, right? Yeah. It still doesn't really help with what we're well, trying you'll to like the battle. Out. If you ever watch Helsing Ultimate, you'll like the battle in between him and Alucard. I like the battle they had originally. So, yeah, I'm sure I like the one they're going to have again. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I just I feel like it cheapens the the lineage that Alucard being special because she was it, it was remarked that, oh, my God, your Turner is Alucard. You're so lucky. You're special. That kind of thing. You know, well, they only remarked on that once. They did, but once was enough to get my brain going, hmm, why is she special? Because maybe he's never sired anyone other than one other person, maybe? Hmm. I don't know. It just felt important because the other bad guy sired someone and they became a, a weird looking ghoul, but they were top tier ghoul. Or were they a vampire? The I, vamp I thought they, they turned... You're talking about Incognito? Yeah, Incognito a... sired someone. Yeah, well, you're talking about the other vampires, right? No, I'm talking about like the kid, the guy that she kept having nightmares about that could shapeshift from a regular person into. Um, the, that was because of the microchips. Oh, all of them see, were like I, that because of the microchips. See, so in my head, the microchips came from incognito. Well, like they, they used a piece of him. Yeah, maybe possibly. So that's why I meant by sired because. He had more microchips than anybody else, from what I understand. And by doing that, he became stronger than any other person that was sired, which is where I came up with my theory from. Meaning the more blood, the power, more powerful you were. Am I, I making at least a little bit of sense or no? Uh, man, that's some, <laughs> some stretching. That's, you know, oh, I, yeah, I mean, like yeah. your, your neck must be hurting you from all that stretching you're doing right there, your arms. And your uh, you know, I got to stretch sometime. <laughs> oh, I, I like but, to say, I like to say I make jumps evil can evil wouldn't attempt. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think that's one of the best things or one of the great things about this uh, series is that it kind of forces you to look at it in a different way. It kind of forces you to to view it. And think about it in a different light or in a different way than what you normally would. I can see that. I can definitely see that. And I can see that by doing, by, by the way they did it, it is very 2000. It's very 
early. <laughs> uh, it's very early millennia esque drawing and, and storytelling. But I sometimes wonder if we're going to run out of stories, if things are just going to keep repeating themselves in a, in a slightly different manner. You know, well, think already, Naruto. It's already like that. Isn't it's been like that for a long time. No, they've come up with some pretty good ones that I've never thought of before. And they've also but, come up with some stuff that's been recycled. Oh, oh yeah. Naruto, so, <coughs> Baruto. Yeah. I, I could go into details about why they renamed it and everything going on with it and blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, no, I was pissed about that. We'll talk about that later, but I was pissed about that. Well, um, back to the, back to it at <laughs> hand. Back to the meat and potatoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the interesting things is, is how Alucard incognito as well, both comment on and reference uh, using human weapons. Oh, yeah. Like, Makes you think that there are inhuman weapons as well. Yeah. Well, obviously. <laughs> but for for uh, Alucard, I, I think the reason why they're using it is because it's kind of fun. It's toys there. It's toys for them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, as they can do everything they need to with their hands. Yes. Like, as you saw, his final weapon was a freaking spear. I don't know if it was final weapon, but like the thing that did the dirty job was a was a, was a Im- impaling spear. Right. And not the nice kind, the kind you have to like sit on and come out your mouth. Like it was brutal. I loved it. And I think yeah, you're right. The guns have a sort of nuance for him that he's like, ooh, I can point and it go boom kind of thing. But I also don't think he feels pain the same way other people do because he will obliterate and regenerate almost instantaneously. Well, it was it's the it's because he's a true vampire and he's made this comment a couple of times when he was fighting one of the Valentine's brothers. He he laughs and says, come on, I only shot off your legs. Regenerate them. Release your demons. Come on, let's have some fun. And then when he finds out that he's not a true demon, that he's just a or not a true vampire, but just one of those fake imitations done with a chip. He's greatly disappointed. So does that mean the policewoman is also a true vampire? She it is commented that she will be a true vampire once she's drinks his blood. So she could be as powerful as he is theoretically if she were to consume his blood or you still believe that the age is a major factor. I believe the age is still going to end up being a major factor. Okay, that would make sense. I could get behind something like that. Um, but what would that make incognito? Well, incognito is a vampire too. A true vampire from yeah. the dark continent, correct? Yeah. Where is the dark continent? Because that man did not have any anatomy whatsoever. Well, the dark continent often is referred to Africa. Set is also an Egyptian god. So that's true. I didn't even think about that. Didn't the guy bring like set the the demonic power into himself? Yeah. The the god of destruction or chaos or whatever. Yeah. And he still got murked by Alucard. Oh, yeah, because it's Alucard. Duh. Yeah. So (laughs) got a question. Got an answer. Do you do you think Alucard's 20 years of starvation, isolation and immobility helped him increase his strength due to trials and tribulations, as you said? Well, it's only 20 years. But do you think he came out of it stronger? I think he came out of it just as diluted as ever. I don't know about stronger because I feel like for Alucard being Alucard, I feel like he's already the pinnacle of what all the other true vampires aspire to be. So when he releases his stuff, I liked the fact that he's like, all right, level five unlock. Oh, level two unlock. Level three unlock until this person's been vanquished. It's like he's setting a limiter for himself that he can't get any stronger. And then when he gets murked, like straight up, only blood is left. And then he's like, all right, fine. I guess I'll go level one. And he comes back with a completely different appearance. True. And I thought that was that was kind of cool. Yeah, I agree with you. 
I agree with you. Uh, but he's also changed his appearance a few different times. And his appearance was also changed, was different when he was uh, for the backstory, too. Yeah. Now, do you think that's due to his desire or is it due to his age? Uh, I would probably say more so due to his desire. So he can just change his appearance if, if he wants to. Yeah. It's, it's also commented on that he, you can't should be able to change your appearance a little bit. All right. <laughs> I just thought of some. Uh, how his glasses, how much do you think they cost on a uh, round number? Five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks? Uh, being that they were breaking like normal glass, I, w- I would probably probably assume 40, 50. 40, 50. Okay. How many of those things did he go through? When you're an immortal, I don't think you really care. I'm just saying, like, he's got to have financial backing from somewhere just for his glasses. Uh, he's a part and of a secret government organization that works for the Queen of England. They got to stay secret because their funding is just just for his glasses. Exactly. Um, now, what I did notice, which I thought was kind of cool, is when he was damaged, his clothing would come back, too. Does that mean this man's naked at all times? Probably. And all we're seeing is just basically really elaborate skin flaps. <laughs> yes. Except for the hat, because he took the hat off. No, but that's the hat's also uh, disappeared as before as well. So. So it could be like a toenail. Yes. <laughs> oh, that puts that a, a whole thing into a different pers- different perspective. Is he somehow able to regenerate clothing? Probably material. He's, pro- he's probably pulling it out of a demon lock hole, just throwing it back on himself <laughs> at all points in time. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i bought a couple hundred thousand pieces from this tailor he died making my order but he made enough that it'll be okay for the next century or so one of the things i thought was really cool that i wanted to touch on before we did the ratings was the fact that in the flashbacks it was much more nitty-gritty much more harsh and for some reason not everyone has a terrible backstory like we usually see some people are just greedy and there was a whole round table that looked like they were just out trying to get our main character and i don't know why be it jealousy be it i don't know some kind of harassment betrayal if you will and there were some twists and turns i wasn't expecting some that obviously needed to be made in order to make the show worthwhile but a lot that just surprised you and it was really cool. I liked it. I liked it a lot. There was a few areas in here that actually made me think that the story was going to go in a completely different direction. And just like every other trope, the old guy is badass. Well, yeah, obviously. Wasn't expecting the butler to kick so much ass. Well, the butler also had a former name too, the angel of death. Yeah, I was going to let you do that one. But yeah, no, you just... For a human, I thought he was a vampire the entire time. No. Until the end, I thought he was a vampire. So here's an interesting thing. Lay it on me. Did you notice that all the vampires could still walk out during the day? Yes and no. Yes, because they did actually mention it one time. They didn't. It was said that they didn't have the defect. Um, but no, I didn't realize Alucard was one of them. Yeah. Can you explain that? Nope. Skin flaps. Yes, probably. (laughs) He was using (laughs) FPS 9000. SPF, yeah, definitely. SPF 9001, because remember, it has to be over 9000. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think this is a good spot to list uh, a rating. And I'll go first. As tradition would have it, yes. (laughs) As tradition would dictate. My rating would be, I'm going to give it an eight. I was going to give it a slightly higher, but given my questions, given what I consider to be a lackluster ending, open-ended, if you will, I'm going to go with an an eight because it could have been better. It was really good, but I believe it could be better. And you, good sir? I actually agree with you on your score, sir. I also give it an eight uh, for some of the same reasons as well, but I feel like there would be more detail in the manga that would uh, help elaborate or talk about some of the questions. I would hope I would assume anyways, 
So I could only, I could only assume that it it would be probably something that both you and I would actually really enjoy. It could be, but I try to follow something that a good friend of mine once told me, and it's uh, don't ruin the anime by reading the manga, and don't ruin the movie by reading the book. I do that. You do that all the time, anyway. So what does it matter? <laughs> I'm selective when I try to follow these things. Yeah, I'm sure you are. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear Lord. All right. So next week is my choice. It is. And what, pray tell, is your choice? Hmm. How does Welcome to Demon School Iruma-kun Season 2 sound to you? Actually, I haven't seen that one yet. So just I'm good with it. Yeah, it, uh... Finished airing, and it's uh, 21, oh? 21 episodes long. Oh, Jesus. April 17th to September 11th of okay. this year. So it's recent. Really? So it literally just ended. Okay. Yeah. Season two just ended because we watched uh, season one not that long ago. Uh, they do have a season three uh, in the works, to my understanding. Ooh, nice. So. If it's anything like season one, I'm going to like it. Indeed. And uh, so I think with that, I feel like this is a good spot to wrap up. I agree. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. If you feel like uh, we Helsing too much justice, not enough justice, missed things, got things just plain all wrong. Feel free to let us know. Featured anime podcast at gmail.com at those anime guys on Twitter, featured anime podcast on Facebook. Talk to us in discord. We're always hanging out in there. At least I'm always hanging out in there. Uh, Rick's more so lurking than anything else. Uh, mm-hmm. Link for that's going to be in the show notes. Uh, Want to buy yourself some swanky merch? Shop.FeaturedAnimePodcast.com or support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash FeaturedAnimePodcast. And until next time, I'm your host, Jack. And I will be a ghoul this Halloween and <laughs> also known as Rick. We'll see you next time. <laughs>